Yo folks, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about mistakes to avoid in the releases of Goddess of Victory Nikkei. Just note, these are my experiences from different CVTs and the builds of Nikkei that has come out. First things are tier lists. Now, huge thank yous, of course, to the Pride Win team for creating this and Tiller, Marak, Madhan, and of course, Koji and or Koje and Tamias for putting this together. This is the most accurate tier list, but it is based off of individual characters. I want to make that very clear. There's going to be other tier lists that I have seen so far. For example, the Drake meta with Sugar and Guillotine. These are going to be appearing in case you guys see them. Please do not follow them. And this is also an older tier list. They already took it down the Pride Win team. But these tier lists focus on team comps in particular. Some of you guys might be wondering what exactly does that mean? If you go into Nikkei and then you go into Nikkeipedia, the character that actually enabled Drake comps was going to be someone like Sugar. She had this ability where if you go into her details, she could actually increase maximum capacity for shotgun units. And this would make it so that she could infinitely fire as shotgun units were going because their ammo capacity was insane. And different burst scales would slay on top of that in order to increase the damage and further enable that. So it's just one thing to take note of. And one thing with this tier list, in case you guys know why it's so good, they ran these characters to level 200 and they are based off of individuality. So Lighter right here, or Liter, however way you want to say it, she's the best support for being able to do cooldown reductions and cover HP and attack increases. And then not to mention, we have Ludmia, who's really good at just tanking and taunting characters or enemies. And then of course, Scarlet. Just know Scarlet is based off of the fact that her crit rate, her crit damage is insane and her DPS is insane, but she is a pilgrim unit, so you can't reroll for her. And this goes into the next factor. How important is it to reroll within Nikkei? Now, some of you are like, oh, that means I need to get someone like Lighter because she's the best support and she's going to carry me throughout the game. Just note that Lighter is going to be for general uses, but she's a jack of all trades, a master of none. So there's going to be better situations, for example, where if you have Sugar, you have Drake, you have like specific units that enable shotgun meta, then Lighter is going to be outclassed. Team synergy and all that stuff is much more important. But most of all, Nikkei is going to be one of those games where it's more important to understand the characters and have a variety of waifus because if you focus on one particular team comp, you're eventually going to get stalled because some stages do not allow sniper meta. They don't allow submachine gun meta, AR meta, because there's going to be different ranges. Maybe it's going to ask for rocket launchers. You're going to need a variety of different units. So it's better to, for example, I would rather have Folk Wang because she's going to be the waifu. Roll for waifus within Nikkei. Enjoy the characters that you like based off of the Nikkeipedia and go from there. Because if you roll for meta and you're trying to chase like the best characters, there's always gonna be the best character. It's just not gonna end out well for you because there's so many different characters in Nikkei. It's just better if you fall in love with someone like Polly as well because she's absolutely adorable. All right, next things is going to be knowing your burst comp. So what does that mean? So there's gonna be burst ones, twos, and threes. One thing I did on my spreadsheets over here, I took all of the burst one units and I checked their cooldown times, right? So the way this works is you cannot cast a burst three without having a burst one unit on the field. So you are like, oh, why can't I enable, you know, for example, Scarlet's like big Scarlet flash right now? It's because you don't have a burst one or burst two, they're dead on the field and you can't do anything. So it's one of those funny things within Nikkei if you are just like, I'm gonna get all of the meta units, I'm just gonna use Drake, or I'm just gonna use a bunch of burst threes. You'll never be able to cast their skills because you don't have proper team synergy and you're just going based off of, you know, big, big boom, boom. And that's not enough in Nikkei, even though it is a fairly simplistic game, there is complex parts to it. So just know you need burst one, two, and three in order to cast skills and actually deal damage within the game. This also leads to team synergy, right? So one of the most important factors is someone like Neon right here is really good because she also enables shotgun meta. This is why shotgun meta was so popular. She also increases the ammo capacity for shotgun units. She increases all allies crit rate by 22% for two shots only. So that's not that many. 
but at the same time is this going to be really good because she can also increase the highest attack for when killing an enemy so you're going to be constantly killing enemies and everyone's always going to be getting crit rate so it's just one thing to pay attention to where you know if you have a bunch of units that are really good at increasing shotgun ammo firepower crit rate and stuff you build a shotgun team but just know eventually you're going to get stalled within like the campaign. Not every stage is going to be shotgun friendly. It's just the way it is. And probably the hardest thing to manage within the game is going to be the outpost. And the reason for that is because this is going to be where you acquire your resources. And this is obviously based off of the highest stage that I have cleared. This is based off of the things that I've been doing within the game. But just note, you won't be able to tackle certain stages because your Nikkeis don't have enough levels on them. So you're going to be like, how do I acquire resources if I can't go past a certain level within the campaign? My outpost is maxed out. I don't know what to do. Go into the I section right here. These missions are absolutely essential. You can see here, I'm getting a 102k battle data set based off of the things I'm doing. You know, it's just recruit Nikkeis, like clear chapters. It's very simple stuff. You like, you can get summons in here. I didn't know this existed because it's kind of hidden off, but it was by far the biggest thing. And if you're a whale, this is really not recommended, but we have to cover it. This general shop right here, it's going to have refreshes and resources that you can acquire. I don't recommend it because obviously it's going to be costly. It costs 3000 gems to do summons, but summons is more for unit diversity within this game. Resources, 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 credits, battle data sets. This is going to be what's carrying you in the early game in order to get to the highest outpost stage as possible or have like a high outpost defense then you're not going to be able to acquire resources within the game in order to progress. I have to really state that importance because at first I was like, oh, I'm just going to take my time. No, you need to rush campaign as fast as you can if you're trying to pay attention to at least making your waifus as strong as possible or else they're just going to get flatlined on the field and you know, you're just going to get stuck really quickly. But this leads on to the other thing. The most important resource, in my opinion, within the game, it's the most finite, is going to be skill upgrades. You do not want to level your skills until you know what team comps you are building, or at least you have some sort of understanding. This is the one resource that's insanely difficult to acquire within the game. It's very limited. You can't buy it in the shop. Maybe you can whale for it, but at the same time, we're not whales, most of us. We're free to play. So this is gonna be the place where you do not touch it unless you really know. Like if you know you're gonna run shotgun meta, then go crazy with the skills for you know someone like Neon. But at the same time, it might be a little bit too early. Take your time. There's a lot of different waifus with Nike. You're gonna have a plenty of moments where you're like, oh, I, I wanna run this team and then you don't have skill upgrades and you need those skill upgrades in order to make that team viable. And of course, make sure to join a union as soon as you can. This is gonna be the guild feature. This is gonna be nice so you can acquire extra resources within the game. It's gonna be unlocked fairly early on as you're progressing. And of course, make sure to jump into the arc right here and do all of the different things such as your tribe tower when you're low on resources because tribe tower has that stuff. Interception is going to be your boss mode. It's going to be fairly difficult. So, and then this is of course simulation room. This is going to be the one place where everyone wants to go into because you can get all of your skills and whatnot within here. But you know, this is a daily reset. So it's going to be the most finite resource outside of like the general resource farming that you're going to be doing. And of course, within the summons, one important thing to take note of is that this is going to be 4% rates for a bunch of characters. Try to get the characters that you want early on, like I said, or else it's going to be a real pain trying to summon for them in the very near future because there's so many SSRs in this game. It's quite unbelievable. And another thing, of course, make sure to save like these credit boxes. Try not to use them. It's going to be a huge mistake on your part if you use them too early and it doesn't give you as many resources. And if you use them at a later time, it could have given you more. So once you're stuck, try to spam these. And of course, if you have limit breaks on your SRs, like your team members on your Nikkeis, make sure to use the Nikkeis with the highest stats that you can possibly use at the very beginning. After you have your fun and you have like SSRs or whatever, don't forget you can reset levels for the low cost of 10 gems, all right? But try not to raise too many units at once. That's gonna be a huge mistake. 
because there's gonna be features later on in Nikkei where you can input five characters, you can have more characters that are going to be leveled up on your roster. Yeah, just don't spread your resources too thin. Nikkei is a heavily resource intensive game and the better you can plan things out right now, now that you have time before the game is out, now that you can look at the Nikkeipedia, you can look on like the Pride Win GG site, look at tier lists, look at different characters, do that before the game actually launches and understand some basics of like first ones, burst twos and all these things. Research, research, research if you can because I am flabbergasted with the amount of content and the things that you can do. Like Julia right here, Vulcan, shout outs to you. There's gonna be an insane boss unit that's going to be hidden within the team comps. But of course I gotta show love to, you know, the number one waifu for me, Volume. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna try and get her. If not, we'll do like the meta thing, try to get Lighter or Ludmia. But at the end of the day, Nikkei is around the corner. I hope this video helped you out. There's so many mistakes. If you get anything out of this video, make sure to prioritize resources and focus on your waifus. Don't focus on the meta because this is an insanely difficult game. I hope you guys are prepared. But anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see workouts and all that stuff. Once we have 40,000 subs, we're doing a giveaway. Thanks so much for watching. Have yourself a fantastic day and see you guys in the next one. By the way, let me know if you guys have like more mistakes to avoid or more tips in the comments. I would really appreciate that.